We had to fetch the pug this morning. He was asleep and comfortable and is currently not impressed. <laughs> I'm Carrie, also known as Jada Knitter, and welcome to Knit Pug. This is Gadget. Will hopefully be good. Oh, donkey breath. Uh, it is Sunday, October 4th, uh, 2015, and this is episode 5. And we are up over 600 members in the group. Hello everyone, thank you for joining, thank you for coming. I... <laughs> That's really all I can say on the subject. Um, oh. Yes. We had a VCAN, which is a virtual knit night on Friday, and got quite a few people joining. That was very fun. It's nice to put faces to some of the, the names that we've had. Uh, so after that, I guess, first things first, I need to do an apology, and I decided I would do a very, very public one. This is to Sue, Crafty Near 7, because I keep messing up her shop name. So this time, I have done... <laughs> I have made myself a very large cue card. Um, she was gracious enough to give me a coupon code for the month of October, which sadly it's, or for the month of September, sorry, and sadly it's October. And both times I mentioned it, I got the shop name wrong, so this is the correct one. I made very, very certain I copied it correctly. Um, so that's her shop on Etsy, and she sells bags, which are very cool. Uh, so yeah. I'm sorry, Sue. I have no idea why I can't. I had it written down right. That's the annoying part. It was written in my show notes correctly. Um, as to show notes, I've actually written my laptops off screen here. I've actually written them before doing the show. So that I'll remember to do them because I haven't lost a couple of weeks and I'm sorry. Um, so I guess on to the knitting. Now, I am once again wearing a piece of knitwear that will not get talked about on this show. I will talk about it on a later episode. This is my um, orange. Or, or, not, I keep trying to pronounce it French, and it's not French. Um, but it's in my projects. It's orange on in uh, iris is the name of my projects. You can go look it up. It's off of Nitty. And like I said, I will talk about it in a later episode. This is what I was wearing last week, which I honestly, I completely forgot I'd put it on. Um, this is my Via Yante. Uh, it is by Martina Bem. And as you can see, it's it's a rainbow. It's a, what I call a dirty rainbow. Um, I knit this during the last Winter Olympics, during Scochi. Uh, and the challenge was to knit uh, for the group that I was in was to knit a Viayante in two weeks um, in a rainbow. So that's what I did. Um, and it's in my projects it's called the two week itch because it did, I actually I got it done in the two weeks and it's slightly larger than the standard just because I used all of the wool. Um, and I had a couple of people comment that they love the colors but the yarn was discontinued. It isn't. I actually, I went to look because it was a new yarn and I was fairly certain I'd seen it last time I was in uh, my local yarn store. I had. They changed the name of it. Um, so it is, it's Schachermeyer, which I am mispronouncing badly. It's German. Um, Tahiti. And it went from Schachermeyer Select to Original, I think. Um, I'll, I have the link to the correct yarn in the show notes. It's a cotton blend and worked up really well. I love this. I absolutely adore this project. Um, the only things I changed on it was I added um, eyelets. So I added yarn overs uh, on all of the color changes. And like I said, mine's slightly larger just because I literally went through and used all of the yarn I had. Um, and it's what five colors? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five different colors. Uh, so it was five different colorways. I just kind of picked them out and went, mm, "This makes a rainbowish type object." So there you go. Um, and it is. 
part of the reason why I love it. It's actually a cowl that has a long tail. So when it's, well, I guess you all saw it last week, when it's sitting on your shoulders, it actually sits over your shoulders and then has the tail going down one way. Or um, if it's cold, you pull it up over your head and wear it as, you know, on your head. Um, and in case anyone's wondering, yes, that is actually a scarf. It's one of my shawls. Um, I was playing with my hair this morning and it went horribly, horribly wrong. So we're covering it up. <laughs> So I wrapped it in a shawl, and yeah. <laughs> uh, so that is... I have another phone. This week is brought to you by hats. You will see the pattern in a minute. Um, because that is pretty much all I have knit all week. What are you over there to... Oh. He's trying to make the carpet more comfortable in the sunspot. Weird dog. Um, this is the turbo, shoot, don't do that. Forgot to set the computer so it doesn't go to sleep on me because it's not plugged in. It's plugs on that side of the room and I couldn't be bothered moving this cabinet to get the, the plug on this side. Um, so this is the turbo hat and it is by, uh, Teresa Seasons, who's a friend of mine. And I was doing it as a test knit, but it is actually now launched. Um, I did it out of uh, Malabrigo, and I've had it confirmed. It is most likely Rios um, in an unnamed colorway because this was a one of a kind that a friend of mine picked up uh, from the actual Malabrigo factory in Uruguay. Thank you, Teresa. Er, thank you, Teresa, for the the pattern, and thank you, Selma, for the yarn. Um, it's wonderful. I've actually worn it a couple of times already because it's getting, it's not cold per se, but it's windy and I have long hair and that does not mix well. I end up coming to work with a rat's nest. Um, so that one, quick knit. Um, I probably could have finished it if I'd actually been knitting on it over a weekend. I probably could have finished it in a day. Uh, mine is a little bit longer than the pattern calls for. I think I did an extra two inches. It's supposed to be a slow chat, um, but because of how I normally wear my hair, which is with a large clip in the back when I'm going out to work and whatnot, um, I need it longer to actually still slouch over the clip in the back. But wonderful pattern, great knit, and it is out. And so are the mitts that I showed last week as finished. These have been launched as well. Um, so the pattern for both of them is out. And that concludes my foes for the week. That was all I finished. Um, so we'll do the three things that I've been working on. And this is where you, you start to notice the pattern. Um, the next thing I've got up is another hat. Uh, I got a copy of Knit Edge magazine sometime last year um, to do a review of with Two Tangled Skeins and I didn't get a chance to do it while I was still on Two Tangled Skeins so I'm going to do it now. Um, I love cooperative press stuff. Their patterns are wonderfully, wonderfully written and quite frankly they're online, not paper. I have a small apartment. I don't have a lot of room. <laughs> I don't buy print books anymore. Um, I love me some PDFs. So this pattern, when I saw the name of it, I had to, I had to do it. Um, where's my tablet? So I have it. How the heck? Somehow I'm bleeding, and I don't know why. I've done that a lot this week. I went to put my hair up, and I, I'm talking put it up with a scrunchie. So fabric and elastic, and I took my hand away and somehow I, I cut the side of my neck. <laughs> I don't even know how I did it because I had nothing sharp in my hands. Um, there we go. So the pattern is called Miles to Go and it is by um, Yala Sapiro, I think. I'm pronouncing that probably very badly. Um, and it is out of the 
uh, the Knit Edge magazine. And yes, mine will actually have a pom-pom. I have a pom-pom maker, so I will probably save it until next week and show you guys how to make one, because it took me forever to figure it out. Um, this one is well-written pattern, uh, doesn't have a chart, but honestly the lace pattern is not complicated. Um, so it's not, it's something that you can memorize once it's written out. I have made an error in it um, with the cabling. Not that anyone would ever be able to really know, um, but you were supposed to, ca the cables are supposed to go out, mine go in, oh well. <laughs> Basically that was just because I read through the pattern, like I read through the entirety of the pattern and then went back to reading my book while knitting and didn't bother to look at the pattern again until I was four cables in and went, nope, not fixing it. So that is, that's the next one. Um, it is out of, what do we got this out of? It is out of three Irish girls in Carrie's BFL in the Mountain Cathedral's colorway. This is actually a fairly old yarn. Um, do I have, oh, yep, I do, it's right here. Oops. It's one of their old labels uh, from a club. This was something that someone sent me ages and ages ago. Uh -oh. Well, so much for not having to pull the cabinet out. I just lost yarn behind it. I'm going to have to do that later. Um, so yeah. Wonderful yarn, wonderful knit, uh, quick, easy, well-written pattern, which is what I come to expect from uh, Cooperative Press. Uh, yeah, the, because I keep mentioning it and then going off on a tangent, um, the title is what caught my eye originally. Uh, Miles to Go is one of the lines from a poem by Robert Frost, and this pattern is in reference to that poem. Robert Frost is my all-time favorite poet. Um, it's one of the few poets I can actually quote poems in its entirety and uh, the line is off of uh, stopping by the woods on a snowy evening uh, what is it it's the last stanza the word uh, the woods are lovely dark and deep but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep um, it's one of my favorite poems so I had to knit the accompanying hat <laughs> that it's cold and my head's been cold, so I tend to knit more hats when I'm, my head's cold. I'm rambly this week. Wow. So sorry. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Uh, this is the other one. This is hat number three for this week. Uh, this is, the pattern's called Spin Me Right Round, baby. Uh, and it's by Sorhu? Sorhu? Again, completely mispronouncing it. Um, that's her Rav name. I'm not entirely sure what the real name is. It is literally just um, a netting stitch. And it will be uh, a snood when it's done. The snood is essentially what I have going on here. Only it's a hat made to purpose as opposed to me repurposing one of my shawls. Uh, and it literally sits towards the back of your head, keeps all of your hair up. I use them because, like I said, I have long hair and I do enjoy leaving my hair down, but I can't if it's going to be windy. So that's where one of these comes in because you pop the hair in there, pin it to your head and it stays put and keeps your hair from looking like a rat's nest when you get to work. Works for me. Um, I have no idea what this yarn is. It's brown sock yarn that I pulled out of my stash. So, yeah, um, this one's a free pattern on Ravelry. One pager, nicely written, works for me. Um, the only thing I modified on it is I had to do um, fewer repeats. I'd knit it before and it was too big. So she says cast on 120, I cast on uh, 104. And I picked that number because I like all of my DPNs to match and it's a two-stitch pattern, therefore there needs to be an even number. And 25 is not an even number, because I'd originally done 100. So, 
104, 26 per needle. It works for me. And that's the wrong direction. Last thing I've been working on this week is my viola stockings. This is going to be the other review. So I'm kind of doing the mixed in with stuff today. Um, and this is out of, it's another book that I got as a review and we did do a review of it on uh, Two Tangled Skeins back in this, hello! What? Uh, back on Two Tangled Skeins in the spring. And nope, oh, that's not it. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Nope, that's not it either. I have it in the program. That one. Uh, Again, cooperative press, well written, well written pattern, lovely photographs, uh, not too many to make um, make it hard to read, but just enough that you know what the pattern is. Uh, and this one is actually written out both written and uh, charted. So you've got both. And can I get to the front? one I have in a different program. Um, I guess we'll do a random review while we're at it. Um, I'm trying to get to the front of the book and I forgot that this one doesn't have a jump to front button like my reader does. Um, program I'm using is Just Knit um, Light, the HD light one. There it goes. And I like it because you can, it works great for, actually, there we go. This is Insanity. Um, this is the first chart for Insanity and you can probably just see the line on there. Well that line, you can move it up and down, make it different colors, make it different sizes, and it remembers where you were. For me, this is an absolute bonus because I carry my iPad everywhere with me and all of my patterns are stored on it. Uh, let's go back to Defarge Dutch Shakespeare, which is, um, it's another cooperative press book. Um, I think it's the second one in the series. Uh, yes, it is, because the first one is What Would Madame Defarge Knit? And 29 patterns inspired by classic literature. It's one of those, it has wonderful patterns in it. It's got, um, let's see here, I think these are all Shakespeare. Uh, yes, they are. They're all Shakespeare, which I should have figured out from the title. Um, well written, well edited, great pictures. Um, and has a little bit of history for each one it has a little bit of um, instructions for various things, but it's not an instruction book. Uh, doesn't try to be, so I like it. So, like I said, these are this is the same one I showed you last week, the finished one. They're not finished, just the other ones still in my purse. <laughs> um, these are viola stockings. I'll show it the right way around. Um, I modified it so it's toe up and I didn't bother doing the lace on the, the cuff. Um, it's by Sarah Jordan and the yarn is Shameless Twist in her Precious Paste and the colorway is Moist Von Lipwig. And she's actually off Art Fire, not Etsy. I think I said Etsy last week. I do actually have, I've already got it set up so there's um, links to her shop. I think that's just about it. Yeah, that's that was actually it. Hasn't been an eventful week. It's been a productive week, just not an eventful one. Uh, we do have two coupon codes that are still going on. Uh, the bags by awesome. I have one here. These ones and the two smaller sizes. 
smaller size. Yes, hugs. This is me we're talking about here. Um, her code is PUG15, which gets you 15% off until the end of the year. And the other one is Bling Your String, which is actually what my hats have been living in this week. This is the Bling Your String bag. Uh, and it is, coupon code is PUGLOVE, and that will get you free shipping until the 10th of October. Hee hee hee, pug bags. <laughs> I'm noticing I have far too much pug stuff. And then we have the... There we go, cows. Oh yeah, that was that was the other thing that I didn't bother putting up. Um, where is it? I knew I was forgetting something. This is in my Art by Anna bag. Which she said she put up a bunch of new ones recently, so go check them out. Uh, this is the Hit to Feud. This, this is me starting it. I did try and start it on Friday um, while we were having the VCAN, but I was also drinking. Apparently I can't count while drinking, nor can I read patterns, because somehow I, instead of just casting on the right number of stitches, I added together the two cast-ons, plus so, I, I don't know, I just, I ended up with over 300 stitches on the needle when I got back to it Saturday morning. There was supposed to be 264. I had like almost 400. I have no idea what I did wrong. Oh wait, yes I do. I tried to knit while drunk. Well, tipsy. I wasn't really drunk. Um, I attempt not to do the whole get drunk thing rarely ends well for me. Yeah, come on you. There we go. So, better picture. This is the Hit to Feud cardigan. And this is one of the two cowls, well one of the three cowls that we have going on. Um, it is by Hiroko Fukatsu. And it's, it's about two dollars, two thirty Canadian. So it's less than two dollars US. Um, and you can come join us in the RAV group. I don't think I said the groups. Oh well, it's too late now. Uh, you can come join us in the group and join the cow. Uh, that one is going to be specifically for that cardigan. And I had one question about the cast on method. It says to use a uh, provisional cast on. Provisional cast ons and I don't get along. I hate them fiery passion. Um, so I didn't use one. I will let you know later whether or not that was a mistake. We'll see. Uh, the other cow is our Hint of Cold, uh, which is for something wintry. So hat. This is actually my first project for the Hint of Cold cow. Uh, hats, mitts, scarves, gloves. Uh, I'm throwing baby things in there. Basically anything small that will keep somebody warm. Um, and then there's the lace cowl, which is the perpetual one. Uh, both of those, so the hint of cold and the perpetual lace cowl are both for crochet and knitting. Feel free to do either. I am going to start up a crocheted sock cowl because I think I found a couple of patterns that will work. Um, I just have to get going and get that set up. So I'll, I'll probably start that today. It's a, another case of join when you feel free. This is my second coffee today. I figured I'd have one, then record. Yeah, didn't help. So that's pretty much it. Yep, got the cows, got the knitting, little reviews. Um, you can find us on, I'll do it at the end, because, you know, why not? You can find me as Jaded Knitter on Rav, Twitter, and Instagram. And you can find Knit Pug on YouTube, iTunes, and the blog, which is knitpug.com. 
and also under the RAV group. So please come join us. And that's about it. That's all we have time for. And I'm getting the stink eye because apparently I'm, I'm interrupting first nap of the afternoon. So that's it. That's all. Happy knitting, happy spinning, happy crocheting, whatever you do. And I will see you all next week. And yes, I am recording, um, even though it is Canadian Thanksgiving, because I'm just going over to my parents' house for them to feed me, because my dad makes excellent food. So I can record first. Have a good one.